Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Now we are going to learn about the Poisson's ratio. Now this is a very important property of materials that we should know because it is very frequently asked in the examination. So let's have a look at the Poisson's ratio. This is also somewhat complicated but I will try to simplify it and let's see how it goes. Okay. Let us suppose we have an object. Okay. So this is our object and we are applying force on it. Now the question is what kind of force? So either we can apply a compressive force or a tensile force. Means either we can compress it, okay, or we can elongate it. Means either we can have tensile or compressive, okay. Now in this example, let us suppose we are applying a tensile force. So this was our initial material. We applied a tensile force. To elongate it, what will happen? The material will elongate, but it will also, you know, decrease in this direction, right? It is elongating, but it is decreasing in this direction. So, the direction in which we are applying the force, that is called as the longitudinal direction, and we call the perpendicular direction means perpendicular to this longitudinal direction or the force direction as the lateral direction. So, what will be the lateral directions? This will be the lateral direction and this will be the lateral direction. Now, what the Poisson's ratio does, it tells us how much the lateral direction changes will happen when we apply the force. Okay, so let's have a look. So let us suppose this is x, this is y and this is z. So this is the new shape, right? So this is also x, this is y and this is z. Now what we can do, we can measure the strain. What is strain? Change in the length by original length. Okay. So in all these directions, we can measure the strain. So let me just quickly write it here. This was the Lx. This was the Ly and this was the Lz. Okay. Strain would be, this is epsilon. Strain in the x direction will be delta Lx divided by Lx. Change in the length by original length. Same here. Delta Ly divided by Ly and Delta Lz divided by Lz. Okay. So this is the strain which the object is facing. Now the interesting thing to note here is that here Ey is equal to Ez for the materials. Means, means this and this. This is equal for the materials and these two they are proportional to this this strain in the x-axis. So this is proportional to this and this is proportional to this and these two are equal to each other. Now if we take out the ratio of this with this and this y-axis with this, this will be a constant. Okay. This will be a constant and that is the Poisson's ratio. So, this is constant and it is denoted by a Greek letter nu. And what is this? This is our Poisson's ratio. Okay. How do we better write it? Let me erase all these things so that we have a space here. So, the Poisson's ratio nu is equal to epsilon. What was this? This was the lateral, right? And what was this? This was the longitudinal where the force was being applied, right? In the x-axis. This is the longitudinal. The Poisson's ratio was named after Simeon Poisson. That is why we name it the Poisson's ratio. Now to get a positive Poisson's ratio, sometimes we have to apply a negative sign here depending on the type of force we are applying. 
Now keep in mind that for an ideal isotropic material of a constant volume, the ratio is 0.5. The Poisson's ratio is 0.5. And most engineering materials have values between 0.25 and 0.30. So what we learned, we had an object. Okay, we applied tensile force to it. This was the new shape of our object, right? And this is the all the three axes, X, Y and Z. Okay, now the axis on which the force is applied, that is called the longitudinal axis. And the axis which is perpendicular to this longitudinal that is called as lateral. So even this one is lateral and this one is lateral. We have three axes, right? So the other two axes which are 90 degrees to this longitudinal, these are what? They are they are the lateral axis. Uh, Lx is the original length in the x-axis. And this delta Lx will be the newer one. Similarly, delta y and delta z. Then we calculated the strain values, right? In the x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis. Okay. And what we found that by dividing the change in length by the original length. It was found that the strain in the y-axis was equal to the strain in the z-axis. And it was proportional to this. Right. So when we take out this ratio. Means we divide the strain in the z-axis with that of the x-axis. That will be equal to the strain in the y-axis divided by the x-axis. And that will be a constant, which is the Poisson's ratio denoted by a Greek letter nu. To formulate this, we have the Poisson's ratio is the strain in the lateral direction divided by strain in the longitudinal direction. Okay, so I hope that this is clear now.